We got our 2004 Lincoln Navigator. And we're gonna be doing that. I think first we'll start on the spark plugs and then we'll get it up on jacks. Or get it up on jack stands, rotate tires, inspect the brakes, steering, suspension, ball joints, tie rod ends, all that good stuff. Flush as much fluid as we can, uh, change the fluids and filters. And we'll go ahead and clean this engine when we're all done because I don't like dirty engines. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we'll pull the engine cover off, pull this cover off here, pull the filter, air intake filter assembly off. I like to get all this easy stuff out as much as possible, make it easier to get to things. So we're gonna do that now. All right, so I got the intake off, the cover on top, uh, the cover that goes right here. So again, it just gets, you can see down in the radiator. I'm gonna leave it off and try to kind of clean the condenser and the radiator as well. Pull the filter out. This is a, a Volant cold air intake. This is actually a nice one because it is actually cold air. Um, it's enclosed. So it's drawing it out of it. It's got a cleanable filter, which I'm gonna go ahead and clean. You can see it's very dirty, surprisingly. Of course, it is a dusty area here. Lots of bugs. So, filter's working. Inside looks nice. I'm gonna go ahead and use my cleaner that I have for my Power Stroke SMB filter. So, I'm gonna spray it on. Let it set for 10 minutes and then hose it out. Then, let's let it dry while I'm working on everything else. All right, so we got it all sprayed with soap. You can see it's already. The squirt bottle quit working on my spray bottle, so I uh, just poured it on there, but you can see that dirty filter water coming out. I'll let it sit so there's 10 minutes, and then we'll hose it off. Okay, we just got done hosing off the filter. I think it looks a lot better. We just tapped out the heavy stuff first and then soaked it with the soap. And then... So for six to ten minutes, and then hose it off with just plain water. We're gonna just let it dry while we're working on everything else. Okay, we pulled that cover off the driver's side. Let's see, you can see access to the coils down there. We'll disconnect them and start pulling them out. We'll see how it goes. Again, this is my uh, first time working on a Ford Triton motor, so it's interesting. Kind of comparing it to the LS. But we'll see how she comes apart. All right, so I got all four spark plugs changed out on the driver's side. They all look the same, nice and even, clean. So I did uh, gap my new ones, and they're the same Motocraft Platinum as you see here, let's see if I can get it. And I gapped them to 0.054 thousandths, 54 thousandths. Um, applied some NICs to the threads and torqued them into, torqued the spark plugs down 25 foot pounds, which is the gap and the torque that the service manual calls for. These put some dielectric grease on the connectors and put them all back together and then we'll move on to the passenger side driver's side wasn't too bad i definitely recommend uh, i'm using flex head ratchet 3h drive i like this one it's a cobalt one i'm using my torque wrench and uh, multiple extensions so just take your time I got it all all three the the three rear ones I got from the side of the car and the front one is easiest just by going in from this angle with your ratchets uh, come out pretty easy so we'll get back together all right so I got it back together one thing I forgot to show you was I loosened this screw out off and took these two up here off and then I was able to slide this over and then I pulled this reservoir back tucked it back here gave me a little bit more room to work around didn't have to fight it so that helped for me uh, put the cover back on we should be good 
Now the, the clips going onto the coils seem pretty brittle, uh, but they seem to sit in there nice and tight. So hopefully we didn't have any problems with that. Okay, so I've got the passenger side spark plugs changed. What I ended up doing is the PCM mount right here. There's two bolts on top and then it just sits in two clips. And there's three connectors. One, two, one, two, three, right there. So I unplugged that, took it out, and that just gave me a lot more room to get in. You can see down in there. Once you get that out of the way, you can get access to all four spark plugs and get the cover off. So uh, I disconnected the battery before I disconnected the computer. It would have been easier anyways, just because when you're ratcheting, you're coming close to this terminal, so instead of causing any damage. And then uh, it gives me a chance, I'll spray some corrosion compound on the electrical connectors going to the computer. Just There was no signs of it, but make sure it doesn't happen. And uh, so I'm gonna put the cover back on, and put the coils on, put the cover back on, bolt it back up, put the computer back in, and we'll move on to the next thing. Okay, so on this side, I had some issues with the plastic, plastic connectors. It's just so brittle. So we, I think three out of four busted. Uh, one busted as soon as I pushed on it to release it, and the other two busted when I put it together. So what I did, you can see that green zip tie there. I put a zip tie around the connector after I slide it on. There's a black one on that one, and a black one on that one. So I slide it on, put the zip tie around the connector, and then cinch it down, and that uh, gets it snug enough to where it doesn't slide off. So I don't have to replace the whole harness if that happens. But yeah, that. Uh, I think you should be able to see that. So if you run into that, uh, this plastic does get brittle with all the heat. So if it breaks, don't panic. Zip tie works great. Okay, so we got everything buttoned up. Getting ready to put the computer back on. I went ahead and sprayed it with my corrosion, anti-corrosion spray. Stuff works really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount that, plug it in. Reconnect the battery, and I'll probably jump on the uh, belt tensioner and belt. I'm gonna replace those. PCV valve, that'll be easy. And hopefully, before the night's over, uh, we'll drain the oil and change the engine oil and filter. Okay, so your PCV valve, it's kind of interesting on this one. Uh, it fits inside this little metal pipe with two hoses attached to it. Your PCV valve goes in like that, then you put your little keeper on. It should snap on there. Oop. And then it snaps on like that. You can go ahead and put it back into the valve cover. Like that. And then you take your hose. Where did my hose go? Here it is. So then this hose goes onto the top. And that's how your PCV valve is. So to take it out, try to remove this hose first, then pull the whole PCV valve out, pop that clip off, and then drop the PVC, PCV valve down from the bottom of that metal pipe. So, and then you'll get it apart and that's it. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, is replace this serpentine belt and also I'm going to replace the belt tensioner down here. I never used to replace those until uh, I had one explode on my uh, work truck and left me stranded on the side of the highway. I uh, had to get towed to a shop so they could just replace the tensioner and, and the belt. So uh, it's definitely a wear item. Uh, while I have the belt off I'll go ahead and inspect the Idler pulleys, make sure they feel good. There's no bearings and everything else that's accessible. But yeah, let's uh, get the belt off and then replace that tensioner. Hopefully they sent me the right one. Okay, so we got the belt and the tensioner off. Uh, I have to say this is probably one of the easiest super time belts I've done in a long time where you don't have to fight the fan. Uh, the tensioner is easy to get to. Here's the old tensioner, Ford part. Uh, it feels really good. I don't think there's any issues with it. So I'm gonna keep it as a spare, and this is the new one. Same with the belt, it's a Gates belt that was on there, and I'm replacing it with a Gates. Uh, no wear on the belt that I see, no cracking. So since this is definitely a belt, 
you could change along the side of the highway. I'll uh, keep a keep it as a spare on the car in case it ever snaps. Um, I always like to keep a few extra little things that might leave you stranded. So, yeah. Like I said, this is one of the easiest ones to do, so shouldn't be an issue for anybody. All the idler pulleys flow good, no sounds, no weird bearing noises, so we're gonna put the new tensioner on and get the belt on. Jenna, you ready to get started on the Lincoln? Yep. All right, we got the uh, Lincoln up on jack stands, so we can get under there. And we got it uh, pretty damn level. So we'll start pulling the transmission pan, start draining the oil out of there. And then uh, jump on the differentials. See what we can get done underneath. My daughter's helping me rotate the tires. Uh, we're gonna change the engine oil and engine oil filter. I inspected the steering. You can go ahead. Inspected the steering. Uh, we found the inner tie rods on the passenger side slightly loose. So I think we'll go ahead and order tie rods for both ends and just get those replaced uh and now as we're rotating the tires all the ball joints feel good suspension feels good um, but the brakes you can see are getting down there focus in so we're getting down there we probably got about eighth of an inch of pad left which for me that's enough to order some new ones and probably replace them when I do the tie rods. So I'll have to get alignment done when I do the tie rods. So I'm going to do both sides, even though only one side's feeling like it. And it's like I said, it's very little. I had to have my daughter move it while I was under there. You can kind of hear it. So uh, bushings for the rack and pinion seem tight. So I'm pretty sure it's the inner tie rod underneath that, or inside of that boot. So we'll order those up. Probably order some new pads. I'm gonna check the rear as well. Um, it looks like my dad put some uh, slotted brake rotors on there. So I don't wanna damage them by letting the pads wear out too much. But we're uh, rotating the tires as well on this one. Uh, it is four wheel drive. The manual says, just like on my excursion, the two rear tires go straight forward and the front tires crisscross diagonally to the rear. So that's what we're doing. And we're just inspecting the brakes as we go. Let's keep it going. Okay, so we got the passenger side rear wheel off. We got a lot more brake pad back here, which is pretty expected. Um, your front ones tend to wear out faster. Airbag looks good. Again, they did replace them. It's got a Bilstein. I wonder if there's like a spool valve or something in there for the electronic dampening. But uh, yeah, this side looks good. Vented rotors as well, or slotted, sorry. And good thick pads. We don't need to do anything back here. We're just gonna throw the tire on. And so nice thing is this one actually put the drain plug in the transmission. So that's a plus. We gotta make sure we take our cap out. We'll drain this transmission fluid. Most of the time, like my Chevys, the Escalade and the Suburban I had, had to take all these out, drop the pan slowly and make a big mess. So I'm definitely happy about that. Huh. Oil doesn't look too burnt. Doesn't smell burnt. All right, so we'll let that drain and we'll move back to the differential. Right here. And then just a 3 8 drive socket or extension to we'll fit it into that plug and we'll take out the vent first that way it drains more freely out of the so i'll loosen this off i won't take it all the way out just in case they overfilled it okay so that's just about out now i'll come over here no leaks it doesn't look like So scoot back a little bit. It's probably going to shoot out the edge. Go ahead and see what she looks like. Oh, not bad. 
a guru loser is black, so don't be surprised. Now I pulled out the drain plug or the vent, the fill plug, so it vents. So we'll get in some light and take a look. There's losing magnets on here. We'll look for, you might have some little sediment, but you don't want any chunks. So we'll pull these up, go clean them up and let it drain. So this one, we just finished cleaning up. And then this one is before we cleaned up. I, we did a little bit of wiping just with my finger to see if there's any metal shavings, but you'll see the sediment collect there. That's normal wear. But so we're gonna clean it, this one up to look like that. Okay, so now we got to, this calls for 75, 140 gear oil, synthetic, specifically says synthetic. So I bought this stuff for, it's AMS oil severe gear, 35, 140, full synthetic uh, for the excursion. But since this one calls for the same one, we're gonna go ahead and use it. Hopefully I didn't cut that off too short. We'll put that up into the hole. Squeeze it in there. Okay, so we uh, ended up taking probably two and three quarters of these little plastic tubs of the AMS oil. Uh, I think each one is one quart, so just under three quarts of oil. I uh, filled it up. It poured. It came out nice and slow, so we put the plug in. Put a little bit of silicone on that plug as well. We wiped it up. Uh, I think this is inevitable. Once we're done, we'll probably I'll do a cleaning from the bottom, anyways. Just to, hasn't been done on this car. And I'll use my underbody pressure washer and clean that up. But rear differential is finished. Uh, just while I'm under here, I like to check to make sure fuse joints are tight, no tears in the axle boots, CD boots, no leaks coming from the axles. Everything looks good. The sway bar bushings don't look wore out. So now we'll move forward and uh, pull the transmission pan off so we can get to that filter. It's uh, pretty much just dripping now from the drain plug. So I think we're good to pull that off. Ready? So now what we're doing is taking all the bolts out for the transmission pan. We put the plug in there just so it doesn't keep dripping on us. Let's get it done. Okay, then we just carefully we get our drain plan underneath it now. So it's probably still got oil on it. Carefully drop it down. Well, oh, we're good. So we'll pull this out. Set it off to the side. So then that exposes our filter. It doesn't look like this one's it's being so this filter. It's held in by the uh, transmission pan. So it looks like we just pulled down and it'll probably come out. There we go. So you do want to, this is like the excursion, uh, make sure this rubber seal comes out with it. Otherwise you'll need to get a pickup in there and pull it out. Yeah, we'll let that drain and we'll clean up the oil pan. Okay, okay so just like in the, they have a transmission, they usually have a magnet. This one's surrounded by where the drain plug is. You can see it's, it's, there's, you're always going to have, uh, wear material like this. You're just looking for chunks and big pieces. This is fairly, really fine stuff. So it looks, the transmission fluid looks nice and red, clear, doesn't smell burnt at all. So we're just going to clean this pan up and I think our transmission's in really good shape. We'll clean the magnet, use good brake cleaner and clean this all out nice and clean. We'll install a new gasket and put her back on there. Okay, so 
We got the transmission pan cleaned up, got the new re gasket ready, held on with some bolts and so on the pan, and the filter is ready to be installed. First, I just want to get down here and just wipe off the gasket surface, get that heavy oil and any debris. Uh, you really want to be very clean when you're working on this thing. transmissions. So you well, don't want to contaminate it with dirt or debris. There's a lot of small passages and orifices. So first I just wipe that down. I'll grab another clean one. And you don't have to worry about it. I'll, I'm going to wipe out where the filter goes. Everything looks good. The oil looks clean. The magnets, the magnet in the trans pan didn't have a lot of stuff on it. So we're good there. So no smell, burnt smell to the fluid. So what we'll do now is we'll take our new filter. As you can see, it's got a new seal already installed. You want to just grab some of this oil, put it on there. That way the seal doesn't get pinched or, or twisted when you go to stick it in. Again, you want to make sure the old seal came out with your old filter or you're going to get a pickup in there. Usually on the Firebar 110s, on the diesels, you got to use a pick to get it out there. Mine's always stuck up in there. So you just carefully... push it up in there and this one feels like it fits nice and clean it, it's even notched out for where the bolt is this is a motorcraft filter so now we got that on there we will get our wrench ready grab an oil pan Spin it around so it's right. Carefully slide it up. Shouldn't have to force anything. And you want to hand tight all your or yeah, hand start all your bolts before you use any power tools or or torque any down. So we got one there. So I got, had four started on here just to hold the gasket in place and get the pan up. And then once I get these just snugged up, or hand tight I should say, and started, then we'll start starting the other ones. Jen is helping me get all the transmission pan bolts in. How's it working, Jenna? Good. <laughs> Okay, so while uh, Jenna is putting in the rest of them oil pan bolts, I am going to drain the transfer case fluid. I believe, i got to look at my book again, but I uh, believe this transmission takes Mercron LD. Uh, the transmission itself calls for Mercron B. So we'll do the Mercron LD in this transfer case. But we'll just get it draining, let it drain. Oh, we finished putting those oil pan bolts on and torque goes to spec. We'll torque them to 10 foot pounds is what the manual calls for. Yep, so same thing on this. We'll dis loose we loosened off the fill plug and uh, we'll move that drain plug. We'll get the drain pan right underneath it. Hey Jenna, can you move your head just over a little bit? There you go. Don't want to get oil on you. Sometimes these can shoot out. So we'll finish taking this out and hopefully hit the pan. Right, look at that. Okay, so then we can pull our vent or fill plug. And these are clean, no metal at all on them. Transfer case fluid looks really good. So we'll just let that drain. And uh, his arms are getting tired for putting all those 300 bolts on the transmission. We're being sarcastic, but all right, 
let's keep going. Now we're gonna torch your oil pans down to 10 foot pounds. I'll start in the middle. Let's snug them up. Work my way out. Okay, so we're just using a little hand pump fits into quart bottles to fill the transfer case. We got the drain plug back in and uh, fill plug out, putting in the Mercron LV, which is what the book calls for now. It used to be, I think, V, and then they replaced it with LV. We'll see how much it takes. Basically fill it up till it comes out of this hole. Okay, so now we're uh, moving on to the front differential. There's no drain plug. There's a fill plug on the side. But uh, looks like you gotta pull that cover off to do the drain, to drain it out. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these bolts, pull the cover off, and get it drained out and do an inspection on it. Just taking out the last bolt for the differential color. It's gonna definitely gonna be fun scraping all that gasket material off. Looks like it's been changed. Part of the housing is missing. So that's interesting. But we'll change it just so we know. 100,000 is good to go. Okay, so I wanted to see if my, I got an electric cooling fan. I was gonna see if it fits. So I went ahead and pulled the fan shroud off and the mechanical fan. I have it sitting over there. Eh, it made it easier to get to the drain, coolant drain plug. So I got the coolant drain plug opened up at the bottom of the radiator. I got the reservoir cap off. Catching most of it. There's a little bit that's not, but I gotta flush the cooling system anyways. I pulled this top shroud off too, because my plan is to clean that condenser just to maximize airflow going through. So once I get the cooling system flushed, I gotta do the power steering fluid flush. Then I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna see if the electric fan will fit in there and I'm gonna do that. I think that'll clean it up and improve the efficiency. Uh, driving to, we just got back last night. We went to California, to the Central Valley, visit some family, drop off, pick up some family members. And uh, there and back, I averaged about 16.2 miles per gallon. And it's driving over Sierras one way and coming back over the Sierras. So I think 300 and I'll have to look at my numbers, 364 miles round trip on tank of fuel. Use about three quarters of a tank and we got, a, I estimate about 16.2 miles per gallon. So we'll see what it does. If we can get these electric fans on there, we'll kind of see what kind of fuel mileage difference we get. Around town, I think we we're averaging right around 14 miles a gallon with our driving to and from town so we'll see i'm gonna see if i can get these uh electric fans on so the fan set up electric fan setup i have won't work because this analog brake actuator is actually would be hitting a fan a dual fan setup that i have there so i'll uh see if i can find another one that would fit in there is able to get some good measurements We'll see, but we're gonna put everything back on, put the clutch pan back on, put the shrouds back on, fill her back up. We'll draw a vacuum on it and then fill it with the uh, coolant. Okay, so I'm gonna get ready to flush the power steering fluid. This is a little different than my diesels, but the best way I could figure out is took off the small sills off the reservoir, uh, unbolted it from the bracket so it's easy to move. Just get a clean, I think it's a peanut butter jar. And I'm draining the fluid into that from the reservoir. And then I'll, way I'll, I'll take a picture of it, see the condition, the color. Once it's all done, I'll fill it back up with some fresh Mercron V rated transmission fluid, run it, cycle the steering back and forth a couple times, pull the hose off again, drain it. I'll probably do that two or three times depending on 
color the fluid, but so far everything's been really good condition. So I'm not too worried that this oil is power steering fluids in bad shape, but uh, it'll be interesting to see. Okay, so here's the first draining of it. Still got some reddish pink, uh, reddish color to it. We'll see. We'll compare this to first and second batch that comes out. Okay, here's the final flush. And it looks pretty good. Compare the boat before and after. See what we can come up with. Well, I apologize. We ran out of storage, so we weren't able to record all the uh, remaining maintenance done on the car. But we did uh, go ahead and get that front differential cover cleaned up, put it back on, filled it with uh, gear oil, and finished topping off all the fluids underneath the hood. Everything looked good. The car's definitely been maintained. So that's nice. So we are wrapping this video up. We are waiting on new front brake pads and rotors and the tie rod end. So as soon as those show up, we'll get it back in the shop and finish the front end. Go get it aligned. Thanks for watching.